The Lord God is spirit. And those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. In other words, by knowledge and love. By understanding and desire, stripped of all images. This is what is referred to in Matthew. When you pray, enter into your inner chamber, that is, your inner heart, and having closed the door, that is, of your senses, and there with a pure heart and a clear conscience, and with faith unfeigned, pray to God in spirit and in truth. In secret, this can be done best when a person is disengaged and removed from everything else and completely recollected within themselves. There, in the presence of spirit, and with everything in general and individually excluded and wiped out, the mind alone turns in security, confidently, to the Lord its God, with its desire. In this way it pours itself forth into that, in full sincerity, with its whole heart and the yearning of its love in the most inward part of all its faculties. And is plunged, enlarged, set on fire and dissolved into that. The more the mind is concerned about thinking and dealing with what is merely lower and human, the more it is separated from the experience in the intimacy of devotion of what is higher and heavenly. While the more fervently the memory, desire and intellect is withdrawn from what is below to what is above, the more perfect will be our prayer. And the purer our contemplation. Since the two directions of our interest cannot both be perfect at the same time, being as different as light and darkness, One who cleaves to God is indeed translated into the light, while one who clings to the world is in the dark. So the supreme perfection of humans in this life is to be so united to God that all their soul, with all its faculties and powers, are so gathered into the Lord God that they become one spirit with that and remember nothing except God, is aware of and recognises nothing but God. With all their desires unified by the joy of love, they rest contentedly 
in the enjoyment of that alone. Happy, therefore, is the person who, by continual removal of fantasies and images, by turning within and raising the mind to God, finally manages to dispense with the products of the imagination. And by doing so, works within, nakedly and simply, and with a pure understanding and will on the simplest of all objects, God. So eliminate from your mind all fantasies, objects, images and shapes of all things other than God so that with just naked understanding, intent and will, your practice will be concerned with God itself within you. For this is the end of all spiritual exercises, to turn the mind to the Lord God and rest in that with a completely pure understanding and a completely devoted will, without the entanglements and fantasies of the imagination. So commit yourself confidently and without hesitation, all that you are and everything else, individually and in general, to the unfailing and totally reliable providence of God, in silence and in peace. And God will fight for you. God will liberate you and comfort you more fully, more effectively and more satisfactorily than if you were to dream about it all the time, day and night, and were to cast around frantically all over the place with the futile and confused thoughts of your mind in bondage. Nor will you wear out your mind and body, wasting your time and stupidly and pointlessly exhausting your strength. So accept everything, separately and in general, wherever it comes from and whatever its origin, in silence and peace, and with an equal mind, as coming to you from a Father's hand and his divine providence.
So render your imagination bare of the images of all physical things so that you can cling to God with a bare and undivided mind as you have so often and so completely vowed to do. without anything whatever being able to come between your soul and God. So that you can pass purely and unwaveringly from the wounds of his humanity into the light of his divinity. If your desire and aim is to reach the destination of the path and home of true happiness, of grace and glory, by a straight and safe way, then earnestly apply your mind to seek constant purity of heart, clarity of mind and calm of the senses. Gather up your heart's desire and fix it continually on the Lord God above. To do so, you must withdraw yourself so far as you can from friends and from everyone else and from the activities that hinder you from such a purpose. Grasp every opportunity when you can find the place, time and means to devote yourself to silence and contemplation. And gathering the secret fruits of silence. so that you can escape the shipwreck of this present age and avoid the restless agitation of the noisy world. If you have begun to strip and purify yourself of images and imaginations and to simplify and still your heart and mind in the Lord God so that you can draw and taste the well of divine grace in everything within yourself and so that you are united to God in your mind by a good will then this itself is enough for you in place of all study and reading of Holy Scripture and as a demonstration of love of God and neighbour, as devotion itself testifies. So simplify your heart with all care diligence and effort so that still and at peace from the products of the imagination you can turn round and remain always in the Lord within yourself as if your mind were already in the now of eternity that is of the Godhead You must always keep the eye of your mind clear and still.
You must guard your understanding from daydreams and thoughts of earthly things. You must completely free the inclination of your will from worldly cares and cling with all your being to the supreme true good with fervent love. You must keep your memory always lifted up and firmly anchored in that same true supreme good and only uncreated reality. In just this way, your whole mind, gathered up with all its powers and faculties in God, may become one spirit with God in whom the supreme perfection of life is known to consist. This is the true union of spirit and love, by which a person is made compliant to all the impulses of the supreme and eternal will so that they become by grace what God is by nature. The more you strip yourself of the products of the imagination and involvement in external worldly things and the objects of the senses, the more your soul will recover its strength and its inner senses so that it can appreciate the things which are above. So learn to withdraw from imaginations and the images of physical things. Since what pleases God above everything is a mind bare of those sorts of forms and objects. For it is God's delight to be with the sons and daughters that is, those who are at peace from such activities, distractions and passions. Seek God with a pure and simple mind. Empty yourself for him and cleave to God. Otherwise, if your memory, imagination and thought is often involved with such things, you must needs be filled with the thought of new things or memories of old ones or identified with other changing objects. As a result, the Holy Spirit withholds itself from thoughts bereft of understanding. So the true lover of Jesus Christ should be so united through goodwill in their understanding with the divine will and goodness and be so bare of all imaginations and passions that they do not even notice whether they are being mocked or loved or something is being done to them.
To ascend to God means to enter into oneself. One who enters within and penetrates their inmost nature goes beyond themselves. They are truly ascending to God. So let us withdraw our hearts from the distractions of this world and recall them to the inner joys so that we can establish them to some degree in the light of divine contemplation. For this is the life and peace of our hearts to be established by intent in the love of God and to be sweetly remade by God's comforting. But the reason why we are in so many ways hindered in the practical enjoyment of this matter and are unable to get into it is clearly because the human mind is so distracted by worries that it cannot bring its memory to term within. It is so clouded by its imagination that it cannot return to itself with its understanding and is so drawn away by its desires that it is quite unable to come back to itself by desire for inner sweetness and spiritual joy. Thus, it is so prostrate among the sense objects presented to it that it cannot enter into itself as the image of God. It is therefore right and necessary for the mind to raise itself above itself and everything created by the abandonment of everything. With humble reverence and great trust and to say within itself, that whom I seek, love, thirst for and desire from everything and more than anything, is not a thing of the senses or the imagination, but is above everything that can be experienced by the senses and the intellect. That which cannot be experienced by any of the senses but is completely desirable to my will. It is moreover not discernible, but is perfectly desirable to my inner affections. That cannot be comprehended, but can be loved in all its fullness with a pure heart. For it is above all, lovable and desirable and of infinite goodness and perfection. And then a darkness comes over the mind and it is raised up into itself and penetrates even deeper. And the more inward looking the desire for it, the more powerful this means of ascent to the mysterious contemplation of the Holy Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity in Jesus Christ is. And the more interior the yearning the more productive it is.
certainly in matters spiritual, the more inward they are, the greater they are as spiritual experiences. For this reason, never give up, never stop until you have tasted some pledge or foretaste of the future full experience and until you have obtained the satisfaction of however small the first fruits of the divine joy. And do not give up pursuing it and following its scent until you have seen the God of Gods. Do not stop or turn back in your spiritual journey and your union and adherence to God within you. until you have achieved what you have been seeking. <laughs>